As we all know, AI has exploded this month. There is lots of new features and products that have been released. So let's try to do a recap of the most important things that have happened lately. As some of you have probably started to see and also started using, Google and Microsoft are heavily integrating AI into their platforms. So for example, now you can get AI help to compose an email or uh, to write a document or to create a graph in a spreadsheet. And this will continue expanding in the next few months. Most likely, it doesn't mean that we're going to work less. It just means that our productivity is going to increase. Also, there are apps that have been released to use AI within your mobile phone when you type messages. So you can answer to an email or answer to a WhatsApp or a text message. Uh, and you can use AI to elaborate your answer. You can just quickly say and express what you want to say and then AI will craft a better message for you. One of the scary things that we've seen lately is the use of AI for military purposes. Uh, we know that uh, Palantir, for example, released a video where they show how AI can be used in software to simulate warfare and figure out what would be the best strategy on the field uh, to win a war or a battle. So you provide to the AI information about your army, the enemy's army, and the weapons that are available on each side, and AI tries to simulate different scenarios to figure out what would be your best strategy. Now, this is not completely unexpected, but at the same time, it's kind of scary because we start to see AI impacting the physical world and potentially impacting people's lives in a way that's not just digital, it's not just within a computer. Also, we started seeing the first examples of AI being able to make videos. For now, these are relatively short videos and the quality of the videos is okay, is not, is not perfect, it would not be production ready. But it's amazing that something that just a few months ago was completely unconceivable, we were just starting to get high resolution images. Now we already have decent like videos that last for like a minute or two. So you can give a prompt to the AI and it will make a video for you from scratch following whatever you describe and whatever you want in the video. This is obviously a technology that's still in its early stage and it's expensive to use, but we can imagine that within a few months, this is gonna become better and better and it's gonna become more accessible. It's gonna be able to produce more realistic videos uh, and longer videos too. Also, several tech companies, including Google, have released a model that allows to simulate a voice using just a three seconds clip. So someone could take a fraction of a WhatsApp message or any audio that you have from a video and with just three seconds of that, they can basically replicate your voice. Now, it's not perfect yet, of course, uh, but it's pretty impressive. Uh, the only thing where we'll still have some margin, as far as I can see for now, is that a human voice is pretty varied, so sometimes we might be whispering or speaking very softly, and sometimes it can be overexcited, and um, what happens is that these models work well if they reproduce the same tone of voice of the original clip but they struggle when you go outside of that range. They would need to have a source with all the different tonalities and expressions to really create a voice that is um, true to the original in different situations. Still, this is pretty impressive and uh, there's been several instances and videos published where people were not able to recognize that this was a fake voice or a replica. And this is also scary because people can use it to basically steal information or get money from other people. For example, we've already had news of people that were calling someone's family and pretending uh, that they're their kids and asking for money and the parents would not be able to recognize this is not their kid. And so this is used also for bad purposes. I'm going to make a video that focuses on the threats of AI and publish it soon. So um, you will find a link uh, here in case you're more interested in that. Another interesting thing we have seen lately is that um, OpenAI and Google have been leading the way in AI research in the last year, more or less. And there has been a debate in the industry and in the academy saying that it's, it's getting harder and harder for universities and public institutions to do the most interesting research in the field 
because to run these large models you now require a lot of hardware and it's really expensive it can cost uh, up in the range of billions and most universities don't have these resources for research but at the same time what i think is really interesting and there has been a memo that's been leaked from an employee from a researcher at google that was saying uh, that uh, they really have to be careful about what's going to happen with open source projects in the AI field. So there are platforms like Hugging Face, where the open source community can bring their own models and these can be run and simulated. And private companies like OpenAI and Google are aware that for as much as they will try to be at the bleeding edge of research, it's really hard to compete with the rest of the world because the open source community is very big. So a single company historically cannot really uh, outperform that. This actually opened another interesting debate about whether bleeding edge technology should be open source or not for matters of national security. Some people say that this technology should be open source so that anybody can try it, anybody uh, can have access to it at the same time and that is the safest approach to it. And some people would argue that uh, this technology needs to be tested and tried within safe, closed environments, but not released to the general public because otherwise it can be used to do more harm than good. And talking about scary utopian scenarios, there has been this paper uh, published in Nature Neuroscience where some researchers showed how they can uh, read brain waves from your mind by um, adding some electrodes to your brain and then they can read these electrical signals and interpret what you're seeing. This was actually shocking for the world knowing that uh, someone could attach several sensors to your head and use MRI technology to see through your eyes and to read what your mind is thinking about and the way that this has been tested is by showing certain images to someone like a short video or an image and then reading the data from the sensor and trying to reproduce what the person was seeing and while it's not exactly the same image it's actually quite accurate of course people imagine that this could be used by governments to read people's mind and while that is possible under circumstances where someone is captured and forced through this process it's not possible and it's not likely to be possible for a long time for people that are just freely roaming around town because you need to have a lot of sensors attached to your head and being inside uh, an MRI machine. So we're not still in a place where you could walk around and someone could read what is going on through your mind, but still uh, this is uh, crazy news and it's a little scary. The positive side of this is that if you imagine the opposite, that would be really useful. So for example, for someone who's blind, they could have a camera that is scanning the environment around them and that it could send uh, the signals to the brain so that this, this person could recover their vision or at least a good sense of what is happening around them. Talking about lighter topics, we've seen AI blasting through the video game scene. Unreal Engine 5 has been released recently and it's a huge step up uh, in the quality of the image and the reality of the landscapes and the characters that get represented by this video game engine and it makes things uh, way more immersive and realistic. Also, several companies, including Ubisoft, have released technology where the characters in these video games can take on a sort of a life of their own through AI. So the video game developer can describe what the character is like and how they should interact with the players. And then the player can speak with their voice to the, to the character and a character will answer to them in ways that are different each time you play. So this is kind of similar like as if you were going around your physical world and talking to people in your neighborhood, for example. The way it works is that your voice is synthesized into text. So you have audio speech recognition that is passed to a large language model, uh, which will read your input and answer in the flavor of the character of the video game. And then the output text is again transformed into speech uh, through a technology called TTS, text to speech. 
but the whole thing happens relatively fast. It's still not as smooth as in real life. It's not completely real time. There is a little lag of like, let's say two, three seconds, but we're getting there and it really makes the video gaming experience uh, a, a different new kind of interaction with characters. And for anyone who's into photography, we have seen, of course, crazy things happening in image generation. And also we have seen AI getting into tools that have been used traditionally by photographers, like for example, Photoshop, where now you can select a section of an image and insert whatever you want into that scene using AI technology. And also you can expand a picture uh, adding elements that were not part of it originally and uh, you can fuel your vision with this thing or you can remove elements that are inside that picture. So these will probably change photography forever and it already has in the last few months. And now photography is going to be a mix of probably uh, recording images from the real world and editing these images with AI technology. In particular, one of the heaviest use cases that we've seen so far is for product photography, where for example, you can shoot a picture of a bottle of liquor and then uh, create all the scenario around that bottle. So for example, it can be in the middle of a forest with a light coming from a certain angle, etc., 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 And you don't have to create any of that, or it can be on a table with a bunch of other things, but you're just shooting a picture of the bottle. Or another use case that we've seen is when uh, you have several pieces of garment that you want to showcase so you can just take a picture of the garment and then you can choose several models and these garments get applied to the model and you can see them in different poses and choose the angle and the lighting and it's super realistic as if it was shot in a studio obviously this makes the whole process extremely faster and cheaper than it used to be before and it changes some aspects of photography forever like we were saying talking about photography also we have seen for the first time fake images being used in political campaigns so for example this month in the us the santis has published some images of trump hugging anthony Fauci when that never happened and it's the first time that we see the use of images to influence electors in a way that is dangerous and will be forbidden and prosecuted. But we can imagine scenarios in which some of these images might not be detected, at least the ones that go under the radar. And even the ones that do get detected and, and get prosecuted, there could be still significant amounts of people that are exposed to these images and don't realize that they're fake. And so it could influence their voting decision based on things that never happened. And for this reason and other uses of AI that are a little dangerous, there is a big debate about what should be regulated in the AI space from uh, laws and government regulations and why it should be regulated and how it should be regulated. In particular, the European Parliament this month has approved the first law in the AI field where they release a legal framework to prevent some of the worst use cases of AI in society. And while this still needs to be implemented by each European country uh, at their state level, this is the first time in the world that we see a regulation for AI being released. And it's gonna be an interesting example and it's gonna spur a lot of debate among countries on how to handle this. Also for the same reason, we uh, will not only rely on public and governmental decisions to prevent some AI risks, but even the private companies that create these technologies obviously have a responsibility for the technologies to be used safely. And we've seen, for example, that Eleven Labs, which is a company that has a leadership position in uh, text-to-speech AI. So when you uh, take a piece of text and transform it into someone's voice, and they have released a tool where you can take an audio clip and pass it uh, to the Eleven Labs tool, and it will check whether that audio was generated by AI or not. Also, we've seen people trying to do the same with ChatGPT, when, for example, someone was writing a letter uh, when applying for a job position, and you can take this text and pass it to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT, did you write this text? And the problem that we've noticed in that case is that there were a lot of false positives. So many times ChatGPT would say, yes, I wrote that, uh, even if it didn't, it just thought that it did. 
But as these becomes more refined and more reliable, as you can imagine, this can be used in education as well. Anytime you're testing someone's skills or knowledge about something, to see is this the product of your own uh, intellect or is this being generated by AI? And hopefully this will become more accurate and more useful for us. At the same time, while these tools are really useful for public safety and to understand what is real and what is not, which will become increasingly challenging in the next few months, it also opens a debate in the work and education field about whether we should care or not whether something was generated by AI or by people that know how to use AI. So I will leave you with that thought. I think it's very interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, please leave a comment if you think there is anything important that I missed in this recap. And if you like this video and find it useful, please share it with your friends and on your social media and subscribe to this channel. Thanks and see you soon.